Hello and welcome to another Acrylico tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to create something basic, we're going to use a foam material and we're going to see how we can displace this foam material using the wireframe. Let's press tab and create a sphere sop. Right click on the output of the sphere sop and attach a geometry comp. Let's press tab again and create a foam material. Then we're gonna drag and drop the material on top of the geo node and select parameter material. Let's press tab again and create a camera comp as well as a render top. Let's follow this by an all top at the end of the network. I'll turn the viewer on, split the screen and set the right screen as top viewer. Right now we just see a black sphere and this happens because along with the funk material we also need a light. But instead of a light comp what we're going to do is open the parameter window of the funk material, go to the common tab and we see that there is a parameter down here called wireframe, which by default is turned off. There are three options here to choose from, we're gonna go with topology wireframe. This will give us the wireframe look on our sphere, which for now is also see-through. Let's press tab and create a grid sop. Right click at the output of the grid and attach a geometry. Open the parameter window of the grid sop and increase the size of the grid all the way up until it fills the entire screen. Great, now back to the font material, let's open the parameter window, click on the emit parameter and set the color to white. This way we won't see through the front face of the sphere anymore. Ok, so now we have our base shape and we'll move on to deforming it. Let's press tab and create a noise top. Right click at the output of the noise and attach a limit top. Right click at the output of the limit top and attach a null top. From here let's open the parameter window of the font material and we'll drag the null top we just created and drop it onto the normal map parameter. The normal map parameter is used to get the lights, but since we don't have any lights we'll just do what we just did so this next parameter enable height map becomes available for us to use. We'll toggle this on and once again we will drag the null top and paste it onto the height map parameter. Great, now if we toggle on the displace vertices parameter, we will notice the displacement on our sphere. On the geometry comp here, we'll get an error that the attribute create is missing. So let's make some space after the sphere sop and attach an attribute create right after. Now, here you can open the parameter window of the noise and increase or decrease the parameters and see what you like. This doesn't have to be exact, you can always come back and change it. Let's open the limit top parameter window, go to the quantize tab and I will zoom in the node here so we can notice the changes every time I switch between the quantize position options. We notice here that if we change to round, the displacement in the sphere is edgier. And the higher we go with the position step value, the more solid the cells of the wireframe will get. Now I'll go back to the camera comp for a second and increase the translate Z value in order to get the whole shape in the field of view. Now all that's left to do is animate this.
we could animate any of the parameters here on the noise tab or we could also animate the translate Z parameter of the transform like we usually do. But there are also other ways we could animate this. We could right click on the line after the limit, go to insert operator and attach a ramp top. The ramp top by default is multiplying the texture on the limit with a ramp. And in the ramp tab we can choose to multiply any other way. For this project I went with radial. And then I animated the face by typing abs time dot seconds times 0 0.4. So now we have already animated two parameters. You can try this out or you can also try modifying this with other tops instead of the noise. And to make the whole thing look even a bit more abstract, let's attach a mirror top after the render and in the parameter window, we'll set the rotation to 90 degrees. And this was it for the tutorial. If you watched any of our audio reactive tutorials and have already downloaded the custom components, you can also try to make this project audio reactive. I'm curious to see what you come up with, please tag us in case you try it, and at the end of the video, you'll have a preview of next week's tutorial. Please subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching and see you next Friday. Until then, have a great time. Bye!